All right, so this book claims to be a Rapunzel retelling, but is it? Hello, fellow book nerds. This is Gabby, and today I'm reviewing *The Witch and Vampire* by Francesca Flores. Spoiler free, so let's get into it. So The Witch and the Vampire is a brand new release and the reason I wanted to pick it up is it's absolutely stunningly gorgeous cover that I was obsessed with. It's just so beautiful. It's pitched as a, a Rapunzel retelling that's also queer. That sounded interesting to me. I wasn't like, oh my God, Rapunzel, but I was like, oh my God, this color, like, I love it. Offer is also half Colombian, half Czech, which I thought was a really interesting combo um, as a fellow Eastern European, I thought I would check it out. So what is The Witch and the Vampires? We follow Ava who used to be a witch, she used to be a root witch. Um, so in this world there's multiple types of witches, so you can be a root witch, means you have control over uh, plants, that nature, that kind of thing. You can be a fire witch, you have control over fire, you can be a storm witch, you have control over the weather. Um, but she's a root witch and um, or she used to be because two years ago her mother, who was also used to be a witch but is now a vampire, turned her into a vampire as well. So for two years she has been locked in this tower and kept prisoner by her mother and her stepfather. Because in this world when a witch is turned into a vampire they lose their magical powers. However, if they're at their peak age for witchcraft, which is like 15, 16 years old, if they die then, they retain their magical powers. So her mother lost her powers when she was turned three years ago, but because the main character is like 15 or 16, she's retained her magical powers when she was turned and now her mother can steal her powers for herself and pretend to be alive. So she's been locked in a tower for two years. Then our other main character is Kaye. So Kaye is a flame witch and flame witches are really well regarded in society because they're the only thing that can kill vampires. So vampires can either die by being be beheaded or cooked, not cooked, burned alive. So we follow a town uh, that is on the border of this thing called Bone wall, I think. Bone wall. Uh, and this bone wall separates the town on the human world from um, this forest that is filled with vampires. So, Ava and Kaye used to be best friends, but two years ago, Ka Ava disappeared, locked in the tower by her mother, and Kaye's mother passed away. So, Kaye thinks that Ava is the vampire who did it because she saw her one time in the tower with blood on her face and she's like suspicious. So that's the main setup and the reason that this is kind of pitched as a Rapunzel I assume is the whole being locked in a tower and then Ava also has very long hair that reaches her ankles. Let's get into the review and, and figure out whether it's a Rapunzel retelling and you know what people thought as well because you know I got on Goodreads and it was like everyone gave it like one or two stars and I was like why? And people are really upset by Rapunzel thing, but let's let's get into it. So first, let's talk about writing. So I actually thought the writing was done really well, and something that I really enjoyed this in this book was the tension, um, the, especially the first bit, bit, bit where you're kind of with Ava trying to escape a tower. It's very tense. It really keeps the reader guessing, and you really felt like you're on this journey. So the writing really made a really good job of. Um, making it tense and making you feel like engaged and with with the main character and trying to figure out your situation and I really like the use of the dual POVs too because we get Ava's and Kaye's POVs and I like that they didn't necessarily always um, like this one begins and this one ends and it's like the linear timeline like sometimes you move a little bit forward in one of the perspectives and then you overtake and figure out what the other person was doing during that time I know it's a very common technique, but like it really felt, you really feel it because they're in the same space. So, you know, trying to figure out the timeline there, it was really interesting. So I really liked that, that approach to it. I thought the writing was really good. No complaints there. It didn't actually feel too juvenile because I feel like, although YA has been my big love for a long while, I am growing out of it. And I'm trying to like balance this whole, I don't really need read YA anymore and I don't really enjoy anymore although sometimes I do, with, with this book wasn't good, because it is good, but it's just not for me. Um, so I didn't feel like this book was too, too YA, if that's a thing, because YA is meant to be YA. 
So just because I'm too old for it does not make it worse. But I will just say, if you're kind of my age or you're thinking maybe you're growing out of way, I still felt like this was a really good book and it really kept me engaged. Now let's talk about world and world building. So I really like the magical forest aspect of it. We do spend majority of our time in the magical forest. So I really liked how that was executed. It did feel really alive and really like... Magical forest is just something I love anyway. I think it's a great trope. I think it can be executed to a really great extent to like really build atmosphere. And I thought this magical forest was really interesting. I will say though that the rest of the world felt a little bit hazy to me. I felt like we were told a lot. So there is an attempt of, of world building. We were told a lot, but I had a little bit of a hard time visualizing the world, understanding how different parts of it interacted with each other and I'm still a bit hazy on like whether this bone wall and this forest is like a dome and it's and it's literally like that's the only place vampires are and the whole rest of the human world is free like I, or is it just this pocket like I think I don't I don't really know so there was a whole bit where Kaye felt always like an outsider because she was mixed race and coming from a different part of the world but then Ava came from that exact part of the world and I don't think she was mixed, mixed race. I think she was just that. But then Kaya always felt like a really big outsider, not Ava, but Ava was also an outsider. Like I never, I, I was a bit confused how how those two, also those two nations related to each other. Like it was just maybe a little bit more of that world building in terms of like telling me how the world works and how they interact with each other or make a very close and slice of life type of thing where I don't learn everything about the world because it is a standalone, so that could work too. But I felt like I was meant to understand the world and understand how big it was, but I didn't. That would be my one complaint, I guess. Then in terms of plot, so let's dive into it. This is not a Rapunzel retelling. This is barely even inspired by Rapunzel. The only Rapunzel thing about it is that she's in the tower. She's held there by her mother. She's got long hair. That's it. And even in Rapunzel, wasn't it like her not real mother? Maybe the sub father was meant to be that? I don't know. Like, I didn't really feel like it, it warranted the retelling. Thing. And I do feel like a lot of books these days want to be a retelling of something. I'm sure that it, it enhances who's interested in your book. I'm sure that it brings more people to it. There's more interest, all of that. Like, I understand that. I can comprehend it. But just because I don't, I don't, I feel a bit cheap to just always call everything a retelling because then it's not a retelling. It's maybe vaguely inspired by Rapunzel, but it's not a retelling. So Inspired Bay would have been more apropos and maybe then people in Goodreads wouldn't be so mad and giving it one, two stars. Cause I was like, oh no, I stumbled into another book that's filled with controversy because they offered it something dodgy. And it wasn't that all the reviews were just like, nah, this book was good, it was meh. Like everyone was like, yeah, this book was okay. But normally you give something three stars if it was okay. But these people were like one, two stars because they wanted a Rapunzel retelling. So. I wasn't mad. I didn't come into this knowing it's a Rapunzel retelling. I just thought, oh, she's got long hand, hair and stuck in a tower. That's kind of a Rapunzel. Okay, let's move on to this plot that has absolutely nothing to do with Rapunzel. So that was more me. So I don't really care. Uh, it didn't bother me that it wasn't a retelling, although I did find it funny that it claims to be a retelling because it's not. But moving on from that, the plot itself, I did think it was really engaging. It was tense, like I already said, it felt really like the the stakes were high, the antagonists were antagonizing, and I felt like the plot was well constructed and it felt like a standalone that works as a standalone but could also be a series. I finished the book, I was like, is this a series? I thought it was a standalone. It is a standalone, at least that's what Goodreads tells me, there's no sequel information, but it could be, it could be a, a series if it wanted to. So overall, like, I was engaged. People said it was a bit of a weird pacing, but I didn't feel that. I felt like we got moving and it was quite do, 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 let's do this, you know, kind of thing. I will say and concede that there's a bit of a weird switch that the characters go through. So maybe let's talk about characters and then I can talk about it. So we have Ava and she's got this, she's got a really interesting arc actually, because she goes from this like happy, normal child to abused and and uh, mistreated and, and locked away and, and 
betrayed by her own mother, which is really harrowing. So she goes onto this journey of accepting herself, first of all, because she's a vampire and she's been taught her whole life to hate vampires. And she also goes onto this journey of accepting herself, her powers and growing into someone more assertive and, and, and that kind of thing. So I really enjoyed her and her growth and I felt really bad for her and I, re I was there with her, like I, I was on board. Kaya, I also liked, I think for her, she lost her mother, felt abandoned by her friends. So she also made sense as a character. I thought she was likable. So the two of them as a couple also worked for me for most part. I thought it was quite compelling that they were kind of friends in the beginning and then slowly kind of finding their way back to each other. But I will say, there's this like random switch that happens where one of the characters going on, like so it's almost like enemies to lovers because there's, you know, the miscom this a kind of a miscommunication, I guess, like someone assuming that someone did something else and they're from, they're a witch and a vampire who hate each other, so they have to hate each other. Like there's all of that going on. So we've got, you know, enemies to lovers, fair enough. Or uh, friends to enemies to lovers, which is good. And I thought that they had legitimate reasons to be distrustful of each other right in the beginning i felt like there was a switch that one of the characters kind of took like one of the characters kind of i felt like they earned the, the progression of the relationship but one of the characters just had that 180 on the spot for no reason and that kind of bothered me and i felt like there should have been a little bit more explanation why this character is having a 180 and is completely like gone from hate to love like but nothing happened in between that like warranted that to, for me. So I did feel a little bit um, out of left field, I guess. I just wanted them to work on it a little bit more. They were cute together and someone in the Goodreads comment said they were toxic. I didn't think that. I mean, hello, this is YA. We do enemies to lovers here. Like this is pretty normal. This is pretty tame. I'll say that. This is pretty tame in terms of toxicity of, of you know, relationships. This is an nice to lover, uh, lovers, I can forgive that. But I do think like the switch of them being the lovers came very quickly and trusting each other so, so quickly. That was a bit like, huh? In terms of supporting characters, uh, we have childhood friend called Tristan. Um, I, I thought his character maybe needed a little bit more padding out as well. Felt a little bit convenient in some aspects and I needed a little bit more uh, from him and a little bit more explanations on the relationships there. Um, but then I will say that the antagonists of especially the mother and the stepfather were done really well. They only had like a book to breathe and the stepfather was really unlikable and the mother I felt like maybe she needed a little bit more fleshing out. There was like slightly like parts of me that were like who would do this to their child and like switch so much from a loving parent to this. But overall, I did think that it was, com it was they were compelling, interesting relationships that were handled pretty well as well. Overall, though, I did feel like there may be some aspects of the flame witch versus vampire, like the, the communities there could have been a little bit more fleshed out. But this is a standalone. There's only so much you can do. So I also don't think I don't fault the book too much for it. Then in terms of the themes, right? It wasn't bad, but I will say I've noticed this thing about why books recently. It's kind of this whole like embracing that you're the monster thing. And it's really like, oh, I was the monster all along. I should have, if everyone's going to call me a monster, I'm going to be a monster. And it's like, that's fine. But like, why is everyone like that? Like every, like a lot of conclusions, especially of standalone YA books. It's like the embracement of I am the monster, be scared of me. And I'm sure it's something to do with reclaiming your power. I'm sure it's something to do with standing up for yourself and, and reclaiming that hopelessness you might have felt at some point. I appreciate that. I understand that. I think it's a nice message and I'm happy for why teens nowadays, you know, I don't feel like this was such a big trend when I was reading YA but it to me it's more like when all of them feel like they're doing kind of similar thing that I'm kind of like eh, all right yeah you're the monster and to me it's funny when they're like I'm the monster I was the monster I was the boogeyman the whole time and they're like so vanilla and do nothing really that bad so maybe I just want them to earn the title of monster because everyone calls themselves a monster and they've not earned it they've not worked for it you know they're just kind of like a baby mischief maker okay so I just had to roll my eyes a little bit but again I am an old woman 
I, I shouldn't be reading YA anyway. I'm trying to make a switch. I'm trying to move towards more adult stuff that I give five stars to because I love it rather than YA that I give three stars because I'm thinking this was cute. So that's on me. But overall, I would have give I would give this book 3.5 stars. It has pretty low average rating on Goodreads, which I don't think is earned. I think this book is great as a YA, and I think even if you're not that into YA, I could still really enjoy it. Enjoy it. I had a good time with it. I read some other YAs this month, and I thought you know this one stood out a little bit more. So overall, I would recommend this book if you're into that kind of thing. But you'll know from what I said. Uh, have you read this already? What do you think about it? But in the meantime, if you could comment, like, and subscribe, I really, really appreciate it. It really helps me out. But that's it from me, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.